Give us any chance, we'll take it. Read us any rule, we'll break it. We're gonna make our dreams come true. Welcome to the National United Podcast about eight seasons in a row. I'm Lisa Fernandes and... I am Chris Wardner. Hello. And we're reviewing You've Pushed Me Too Far, which is from season five of Laverne and Shirley. Directed by Joel Zwick and written by Jeff Franklin. And I know you're going to have some facts about them, Chris, in the future. Mm-hmm. We'll get to them soon. Uh, here's what the episode's about. Laverne Shirley's morning exercise routine is interrupted by Edna, who informs them that Lenny and Squiggy are having a fight yet again. The girls intervene in the violent spat, which was about Squiggy treating Lenny poorly during their attempt at bombing passerbys with water balloons and mustard balloons and peanut butter and jelly balloons. The argument escalates until Squiggy shoves Lenny out the window of the fourth floor apartment and the fall lands Lenny in a garbage can and breaks Lenny's leg up to his hip, leaving him enraged at his oblivious best friend. Squiggy goes to stay at his Uncle Elliot's wax museum while the girls take care of Lenny. All the while, Lenny stews over Squiggy's mistreatment of him until he finally decides to go down to the wax museum and confront his best friend. Can this friendship be saved? So what do you think of this episode? This was a very enjoyable one. I, yeah. I really liked it. I think the easiest way to describe it is that it's not quite High Neighbor Book 3, but it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does a good job balancing uh, the actual sentiment that involved and the notion of Lenny just being sick of this because Squiggy's mm-hmm. just been treating him poorly ever since they were kids. Ever since they were teenagers, he's been Patsy. He's uh, taking the weight on of uh, being the victim and the guinea pig and the test guy for all their schemes. And then finally he almost, you know, he, he does get seriously injured and then it's like enough. Exactly. It's like, yep. I'm done with it. He's out. And, uh, that's enough to kind of shake Squiggy up and that's enough to make the girls all, even slightly alarmed because if the boys are fighting, do you imagine what, maybe we could fight that badly. Mm-hmm. We'll want to speak to each other again. They get there almost several times, so they know what that's like. That but It balances that seriousness out with a lot of funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like an effortlessly like, funny episode and it's physical and it's beery and it's brawling and it's silly, but with a heart. So, yep. It's, it, it's I, I, there's two things, you know, I, I guess to bring off up right at the bat, right at the bat of it, you know, right off the bat, excuse me. You know, I, I was first, you know, I was, you know, as you're saying, it's great this whole discussion of who they are and the arguments and how far things can go with these two, because I initially thought with the broken leg, this was going to be the broken leg being a fake episode, which, you know, yeah. Lenny just trying to get favors off the girls, you know, or even that squeaky puts him up to it, that this was all like a bit of a, yeah. a bit of a show, you know, per se. Yeah. And I'm really glad it didn't go that way because it's a, it's almost sort of like, you know, when I say high neighbor, it's like they took the second half of high neighbor book one in the first season and sort of expanded that into almost like its entire episode. Like it starts with the fight and yeah. ends with the resolution of it rather than really having that much other setup aside from it. And yeah. it worked really well there. Additionally, um, yeah. I also really like the aspect of reversal of that same argument where in the, you know, even though in both cases, Squeaky was the sort of the person that instigates the fight because in the original it was you know, the, the shirt thing. And here it's with the whole water balloon situation. And just it, that becomes like the breaking point of realizing you know his his the abuse that he's endured for you know what do you figure now about 17 years at least yeah yeah and yeah yeah and so there you know in the final scene i don't want to get too far ahead of things but like there's this reversal of the first part of the episode squiggy is being very dominant and narcissistic and like you know i've got this possess i'm possessed i've got this compulsion i'm you know sort of i can't help it he's not taking any responsibility he's not apologizing And then when it comes to the actual scene of their reconciliation, it's actually done in a way where he is literally like the hump. He's got the hump hunchback thing going like Igor Quasimodo. Yeah. Where, and especially Igor, where he is. Um, excuse me. That's pronounced Igor. But Igor. <laughs> it puts him in a meek position. He has to become yeah. small to apologize, to let go of his pride yeah. and be meek. I, th- I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully staged, beautifully done. Laverne's line, is that help for business or pleasure? Is a good line in that scene. Yeah, 
This is a remarkably Randy episode if you really think about it. It also has got a lot of great work from David. Yes, 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 yes. I was going to mention that. I was going to mention that he's real good, specifically. Michael's good, too. The two of them are basically doing a great past pas de deux where they're um, in this par- acting partnership together where they've created these characters when they were you know, barely in their 20s. I think they might have actually been like 19, 18 when they created them. I can't remember exactly when in college they clicked and they came up with them. Mm-hmm. But um, well, for a lot of their adult lives, they've been honing these characters into genuine human beings. And to have them act out this plot conflict that's kind of been bubbling over the past five seasons is uh, kind of, it's powerful in its own way underneath the funny mm-hmm. because gosh if you really really think about it and uh think about how lenny has subordinated himself to squiggy in uh stuff like a racer head mm-hmm. where he just accepts half a date and then it somehow ends up swallowing the keys in the truck and you know has to kind of endure that even though he like desperately desperately wants you know a girlfriend of his own in a lot of ways throughout the show Mm -hmm. uh you think about that and you kind of just finally see it just like bust out and blow up like vesuvius he's just you know done with everything he is not going to take it anymore he wants to be seen as a friend versus a footstool yeah, he wants to get back on kind of sim onto the similar level, basically. That you know, yes, a little yeah. more leeway yeah. where it's not just simply you've got a scheme and I'm going to go along with it. I can come up with the scheme yeah. too. It yeah. it also makes me wonder about you know the you know not to get too really dense on an episode that is as we've mentioned it, it's hysterically funny. This is a hysterically yeah. over the top and wild yes. episode, but um, yes. I mean, my, my mother laughed like crazy throughout this. She got a huge giggle out of like the whole yeah. exercise bit and um, and in parts I didn't expect her to as well. But uh, <laughs> the but what's interesting, though, is that there is this element of enmeshment and dependency yeah. that Lenny has with Squiggy because he feels so bad about himself that he doesn't have part of the reason he doesn't fight for his own independence is because th- partly just there is the. Um, giving up his power and agency to somebody else takes off yeah. responsibility from him. Yeah. 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 It's not his fault. It's the devil. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's his inner bad boy. He didn't really intentionally do it. Just whenever he sees a water balloon, he has to smash it in Lenny's face. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, but it's not his fault. He's just doing it. Cause he has to, I, his instincts demand it. This is a Ferris Bueller Cameron situation, isn't it? Yeah, in a lot of ways, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in a, lot, in a lot of ways, Squiggy is Ferris and Lenny is Cameron. And Squiggy is dragging Lenny into the adventures and into the schemes, even though he doesn't want, want to be involved. That's especially true by the time we get toward the end of this season. Hmm. There's a really good example of it, like nearly at the end of the season. We'll get there eventually. You kind of really consider how they've just been partners in crime. Seems like they they they're partners in crime until the heat comes down, mm-hmm. and then Squid kind of expects him to take the consequences in a low way. And when or when something really 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 like severe happens, it's like Lenny, help me! And Lenny doesn't know what to do because he's so used to following him. Mm-hmm. He's so used to just taking Squiggy's orders and and just doing them, not countermanding them. And you and well. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The thing is, is like, you know, when coming back to like, you know, there's the scene where the group, you know, the group is all having the party for Lenny in the girl's apartment and yeah. Squiggy, sweet. Squiggy yes. tries, you know, and I love that scene. I adore that everyone's there, Carmine's yes. there, Edna and Frank are there. Like yeah. they're happy he's okay, which is yeah. a really yes. charming way of also showing how this found family is really bonded by this point. Yep. And yet... Not only is Squiggy not there because, you know, narcissistically he believed, oh, we're going to have it. And even I think, doesn't he call it my place, if I recall? Yeah. And I think so. Yeah. I wonder, did Squiggy even see him at the hospital? Did he even go to the hospital to make sure he was there? Yeah. And make sure he was okay? He had to have at least been in there overnight. 
Because mm -hmm. when you break your leg like that all the way up to your hip, they keep you for observation. Mm -hmm. I think even back in the uh, early 60s, they would have done that. Because he had to have been in, at least in traction for a little bit. Yeah, that, that, you can see with the way the cast goes, and the cast goes all the way, like I said, right up to his hip joint. So that was uh, that might be uh, break in several places. Definitely, yeah. I mean, four stories up. Be holy cow! You know, oh, yeah. if there hadn't, oh, yeah. you know, what is it? Yeah. You know, if the garbage hadn't been there for, for him as it always has been, you know, yep, that could, yeah. that could have been pretty no. bad. Yeah, squat. Yeah, awful. And okay, we have to like go to the beginning with the girls. In their little leotards trying to freaking do this exercise program and follow the instructions of this guy and his acrobatic dog doing all of his little bends and stretches and yoga poses. My uh, my mother actually had a note about that, which she she realized it was probably a reference to a Jack LaLanne, the, uh, yes! the, fi the fitness instructor who yes, was yes, very yes, popular yes. in television at this time. I was going to bring that up. Because I was going to say that's definitely a Jack Lane reference. My notes literally say that's a Jack Lane reference. That's great. <laughs> Brain share. Oh, my goodness. Brain share. Brain share. I love that it starts with utter wackiness. Immediately with this physical comedy and, and uh, Shirley getting her legs stuck in a pretzel pose. Mm -hmm. And Laverne, like, saying, ah, you have a dog body. Now you're making a dog sound. Oh gosh, and then and and I my note here about what happens trying to get her unstuck is Laverne surely is not a mop. No, she is not a mop. She is not an object. She is a woman. Mm -hmm. She is a full born woman, and it's like the way, the way they accomplish that little bit of physical humor by swinging it swinging around like holy crap. Oh yeah, yeah, that was very impressive. Yeah, that was a stunt where you go wow. And then when the girls go up there and they try to help, notice that Squiggy is threatening to cut poor Jeffrey's neck. Ugh, this poor stuffed iguana has been through so much. He's witnessed so many fights. He's had Shirley squeal about him. You know, he's been kidnapped or squignapped, I guess. Yes, he's had his tail injured. Yeah. He's well wrapped up. He's probably witnessed several thousand horrifying orgies <laughs> yes yeah let's 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 call them that and and not <laughs> uh, you know let's let's just give us the benefit of the doubt like yeah sure they they vodeo do 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 with uh many many ladies of the evening sure <laughs> many t many switchboard operators and waitresses and uh <laughs> God, what was the name? Girls what was what was the name of the lizard what? in uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead? Eli. Eli. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, there he is. It's there interesting is. to me that once upon a time, um, Jeffrey was Squigs, and they were sharing him. But at this point, Jeffrey is Lenny's in a lot of ways. He's basically he, that's basically his comfort animal mm -hmm. because he cradles that little stuffed iguana like he is a baby. Mm -hmm. When he gets him back. Oh, certainly. And, and uh, it's like he, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and Lenny's also got him in um, Take My Plans, Please, is right? It, this is the one he yes, the, yes, yes. the comfort animal he's brought into work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He uh, cradles him the exact same way, like his baby. Yeah. And um, of course, his idea of revenge is to smack the heck out of the mobs with a giant mallet. I, I wonder uh, if they ever use the mallet with uh, the cockroach. Um, was it Aaron? No, it wasn't Aaron. It was some. It was something. Uh, oh, Lloyd, gosh. Larry, something. The cockroach, though. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I'm totally drawing a blank. And of course, the sentient blob that lives in the apartment. Yeah, I still. That would too. I, I still want a horror movie about that. About the sentient blob. There was. The, yes, what was, what was I love wasn't it. there that? Um, oh God, what was it called? It was the one with Jeffrey Combs voiced a uh, living mold in some guy's house. Some horror movie. Oh my goodness. Oh man. I've not seen that yet. Yeah. I, it's I, fabulous though. Motivational growth. That's what it is. Okay. That's fabulous. Yeah. I've not seen that before and now I want to. Yeah. I, I, I did not even know that existed. I think I've got, you know what? I'm looking over my shoulder to see if I, I think I've got the, uh, yep. There it is. The DVD is on my shelf. I'll, uh, I'll show it to you sometime. Oh, oh, it's fabulous. Oh, I want to see that. That's incredible. Yeah. I even <laughs> anyway, sorry. Yeah, the mallet though. Yes. For, for the 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 yeah. roach or the gelatinous cube or what have you. Uh yes. <laughs> I can see him using that. But yeah, it's smashing the moss. That yeah. the energy of the fight 
is amazing. Yes. That is one of my favorite yes. scenes so far for the season, if not possibly for the whole show. Yes. I just love the whole, yes. the you know, it starts at like a 10, comes back down to like yes. a six and then goes up to 12 when it concludes. Yep, 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 yep. The, oh, the physicality of it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I can just encapsulate the whole thing in this one gesture of what the boys are staring at each other, threatening bloody murder. The girls come in, grab their wrists, they look at them, they notice they're in tights, and then the kissy face and the palm biting. Mm -hmm. And the way they do that, then, and then the girls threaten them, they go, Ugh. There's so many good, like, mood shifts in that scene. There are so many good um, uh, tempo changes, as you pointed out. And it's handled very, very well. And it's just like how, like I said, you can, you can see who has theatrical training in the show. Michael and David definitely had theatrical training. Michael, we know for sure. And we know David after sure. But it's stage trained in a good way because all those big physical moves and the micro expressions michael's face is ridiculously expressive in this episode it's always expressive but oh man in this episode wow he's just going for full on forbear in this one this face yeah and 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 it's and, 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 and it's then bolstered i think it's like they looked at the dialogue they looked at this idea this concept and man they just yes run with it like you know i I, oh, yeah. I like going through it a second time like i love the um oh god the uh there's two little exchanges one is you know where laverne's like huh huh come on let's see some shame and he has the shame yes. face and it's like you know boo-boo face into the under the chair and yeah. the good boy len and uh yeah. the um <laughs> the little the moment with uh where they're leaving you know you can't shove anything into a closed mouth and Shirley goes oh that's so very wise Laverne yeah I read it in a bazooka comic <laughs> <laughs> I love that line I love that line that's a great line and it's such a little good example of the rhythm and pace of this episode mm -hmm. my gosh the rhythm and the pacing is beautiful in this one and the way um they stage the uh, falling out the window scene is pretty great. It's yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Squig Squiggy is utterly useless in a crisis. He just does not know what to do. Mm -mm. He just panics uh, while Laverne tries to shout orders and Shirley is too horrified to do anything at all. Yep. Which is interesting. Yep. That's, that's very Shirley though. Cause I mean, as we've seen like, you know, yeah. when they've had possible intruders in the apartment, you know, Shirley's never had any sort of sense of real tactics. She just kind of panics or freezes, yeah. which says, again, yeah. says a lot about her upbringing and the way that she was raised to defend herself, which was don't defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Either someone's going to take care of the problem or you're going to get hurt and have to take the beating, which is, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Out of my heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that that like oh, that, that get too real for a second there. Right after what he, no, we just we just no, we no. we just did it. No shame in getting real. No shame in getting real, poor girl. But yeah, but, uh, but I did have a yeah. I have a cute note. I have a cute note what? from my mom that uh, she mentioned uh, Laverne going nuts, running to go try to save Lenny out the window, which. <laughs> uh, yeah. Was said was said in a delighted tone that was like I think I think we have another Leveni shipper on our hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she made it through like stuff like uh, look for a leaf and uh, I mean she was the cemetery. She, I, she I guess what I mean is like it's not hardcore into and on onto yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like there there's there's a difference between oh yeah I can see it to oh yeah this needs to happen. Nah. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. This is a good episode for them in a lot of ways if you really think about it because uh, she's horrified that he almost dies. Uh, she goes over the top at his, uh, at his welcome home party and is, uh, doing everything that she can to, um, you know, keep him cheered. And she's really, 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 really super happy. You can see he's, she signed his cast. Mm -hmm. You can see the big curse of L right above his knee, which he said where she signed it. And, um, she goes to extreme efforts to try to like fix everything for him, and get his pants. All done. She saw the leg up of one of his jeans, which wasn't his jeans, it was Squiggy's. But, uh, yeah. So she is not pleased with the notion of him dying. Mm -mm. Nope. At all. I mean, this is the guy who took her to for the debutante her... ball, for goodness yeah. sake. Yeah, yeah. For all of her, oh, this man deserves to roast in hell in her dream. 
<laughs> she uh, definitely does not want him to be hurt and can't stand him being hurt and uh, is trying to make him feel better. To to all throughout all of this. To be fair, the with the dream of them roasting in hell, for sure roasting in hell, uh her dream was a nightmare, to be fair. Yeah. True. True, true, true. But it's still her subconscious. Yeah. It's still her subconscious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course in her subconscious she's also like, I can marry Lenny if things get dire. <laughs> but what about Squiggy? <laughs> That's what her subconscious is telling her. True, true. Um, anyway, but yeah, back to, you know, this episode itself. Yeah. The, um, yeah. the, as you're saying, like the character interactions with them, you know, um, I thought it was also really special to see a lot more of Shirley with Lenny here too. And I think, yes, and, yes. and seeing that contrast, I think as well, because sure, you know, Shirley's very much in mom mode with him being injured yeah. and Laverne's like in many ways trying to be the best friend that he kind of wishes Squiggy would be and being like, Hey buddy, let's, yeah. let's see what we could do for you. Yeah. 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 Uh, for Shirley, I think this is a chance to be her best nursing self. She's trying to let her inner Florence Nightingale out. Mm, mm -hmm. And she's just going to you know, be the best nurse that this kid has ever seen. And is then horrified by, like, there's nothing really wrong with him dumping his sandwich in the soup. The only thing about that, people eat that way all the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why that bugs her. But, um, uh. I can understand why the foot thing bothers her. Yeah. Oh my God. I Come on. We all know real BLTs are Bosco licorice and Turkish taffy. <laughs> you can tell when things like that come up that Lenny was raised latchkey and he had to feed himself. Oh yeah. And that's what he, what he ate when he was a little kid because they were poor as crap. And uh, just shove anything in there that you can find. Oh boy. That's why he's a uh, sugar rush mm -hmm. human being. But you're right, though, with but Shirley yeah. being the Florence Knight, and she even gives him a bib. He's a big baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then she puts a bib over his mouth while he's trying to drink. It's even worse. That's, again, very Shirley. Uh, I am going to do the thing, and the world is going to conform around that yeah, thing yeah, that I yeah, want to yeah, do. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Even though she's horrified by the bathroom, horrified she has to touch his body, mm -hmm. and horrified by a dozen different things. I'm trying to control myself. Going, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about let's just talk about the foot scene. Let's just talk about the foot yeah. scene. Yeah. Get out of the way. Yep. <laughs> so there was oh, there was a specific gif that a gif, excuse me, that I <laughs> This, you can't say Jeff, it's okay. Uh, there, there was a uh, specific gift that I I sent you during this. I think I I'm hoping I timed it at just the right moment when this when the moment happened, because uh, I think you did actually. Yeah, I'm I'm surprised that my mom laughed anyway. I did warn her about this scene, but she she did laugh anyway. I was like trying to keep that scene a secret because I wanted to see your reaction to it because. Uh, in fandom, it's kind of like a jaw dropper because it is you know, basically she's innocently washing his foot, but that is his pleasure center. And Michael sits there in a chair and mimes an orgasm. Right. <laughs> this is what happens. And this aired at eight o'clock on, on a Thursday night. I was gonna say Thursday Thursday <laughs> on night. Television. God. Yep, on primetime television. And you sit there, you watch it, and you go, how the heck did they get that past the radar? How did Susan Leeper manage to miss that one? Yeah, I'm... I'm Lord. Susan Leeper, oh my god. <laughs> Susan Leeper, we love you, Susan Leeper. <laughs> oh, that... We'll explain the in-joke in, uh, I guess, the comments, unless you want us to explain the in-joke. I, 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 well, we... Uh... That was the problem. It was an episode we, we tweeted about because it. we tweeted about it because we we discussed it because yeah. it was for um, debutante ball, I think, right? Yeah. 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 No, 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 no not no. debutante ball. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, God dang go it. Ahead. Uh, nope, I lost it's it. Dance studio. It's I think. from yeah. It's it's right. It's from season three, I think. Pretty sure it's from dance studio. I think. Yeah. I think. I think. I think. We're just season four. I think. Think. They think. We'll see. <laughs> look. We'll look this up and then we'll patch this in. Oh, oh, thank. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there is a script note that we post on Twitter. It's in the actual script. It's a scan uh, where Laverne is thinking dirty, depraved thoughts about sex in the stage direction. You can't do anything about it, Susan Lieber, because he can't sense the thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like and it, it doesn't say yet. Become... 
yet. Yeah, 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 it's the last word yet. Uh. Oh, it's so funny. It's so good. Uh, but yeah, I expected you to be even mildly uh, scandalized by that. I don't know why or mildly amused the fact the show went there and you were so nonplussed. Yeah, that, that like yeah. Dying. Well, okay, I... <laughs> <laughs> when we watched the episode and you brought you brought this up in our little kind of Laverne and Shirley, you know, group, our, our group of uh, fans and uh, and kind of our friends, you know, within the community yeah. and yeah. our, group, our chat. group chat. And <laughs> I mean, I, I'll say what I said before. I have seen Thriller, A Cruel Picture, a.k.a. They Call Her One Eye, the Christina Lindbergh <laughs> Swedish exploitation movie. I've seen the oh. X-rated cut of this movie in a packed full house movie theater next to my dad. This was nothing. Oh, this was God. nothing. Oh God. I can't imagine watching that movie with my father in the same zip code as <laughs> I'm assuming you've seen it. Like, yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah I have. And it's uh Not for him or he's awake, but yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Oh. Yeah, so it's uh you know, so yeah, it. I will say it's a bit of a surprise that it went there, but they have pushed the boundaries before. And this is just a little, I guess what it is, is there's an honesty of actually going there that made me feel more comfortable yeah. with it, I guess, or just oh, kind of, okay. there was no scandalizing that had, that took place here. Yeah. And my only regret is that it wasn't Laverne that, that uh, made, you know, yeah. Lenny come in his pants, but you know, that's, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about the uh, only regret I have to. Uh, he probably would have exploded if it was her. <laughs> Just boom. Went would have been like ceiling. that scene in Scary Movie. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Gonna die an old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, goodness gracious. So then, uh, but, yeah, yeah. but that brings us to... Um, the next thing to kind of bring up that also I really wanted to talk about, and and we'll get to the 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 folks behind the camera because yeah. I I have notes, but uh, the yes. um, I love Lenny's rage in this. I kind of love the idea that yeah. when you finally push this man too far, he goes off, and yeah. Yeah, he yeah. he sees he's packed up Le Squeaky's things, or he's had Laverne or Carmine pack them up for him, and I can even see like yeah. Carmine or Frank or Edna like happily packing these things and saying I am totally on board with this plan and yeah. you know Shirley being the one the voice of reason and Laver Laverne being the voice of reason saying do you really want to burn this bridge you know yeah and it's but it's I I really appreciate that and the the way he attacks him in the party yeah. scene you know about the photo yeah. and I mean that was fantastic you know I just I like yeah, that yeah, yeah. I like the layer yeah, yeah. being added here yeah well, Michael has long said that uh, these two characters are people where you can't make fun of them to their face or they'll kill you or they'll try to kill you. Mm -hmm. And like Lenny is like sweet and very kind and soft, at least by this season. But when you prod him, uh, he will uh, access his uh, huge, huge stores of unexpressed rage. Uh, that happens a little bit in season six, a little bit in season seven. Uh, but this is probably the most fulsome expression of it since he uh, threw that temper tantrum when Laverne rejected his proposal in Lenny's crush. And he loses his mind and crawls underneath her uh, coffee table mm -hmm. and refuses to surface. Can't stand it when people lie to me. It drives me crazy. So, yep. yeah, there's just certain berserk buttons with him. That if you press them, and then of course Squiggy finally pushed once again pushed the button too hard, mm -hmm. shoved at him way too hard, and that's what happens. Mm -hmm. That goes to show show you that as much as these guys are each other's best friends and how much they love each other, and as Lenny is going to end up saying later in the season, I love him the same way uh, you love her, which is uh, Laverne loves Shirley. Mm. But just like the girls, if there is a betrayal that is intense. They will go at each other. Just like we saw the girls nearly murder each other in one heck of a note this season. So they, they, they will fear. They do not fear going there. They do not fear going there. So, yeah. yeah I, I, the way they finally let him tap into that is great. It's, yeah, uh, it's very, it, yeah, I was just going to say that it also, it's, 
it's one of the things I also appreciate overall about this episode, and we've kind of covered this overall, is its consistency to the characters that have been developed over time and the strengthening of those relationships is really working well. You know, it, it's yes. another example of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we have come to care about these people. They have, in spite of themselves, come to care about each other. Remember, season one, Laverne looks at Lenny and says, Squiggy is your only friend. Now, look at season five, where they hold a party for him, where she and Shirley are clearly his friends, in spite of it all. Where they really, really care and really, really do not want him to get hurt or die. Yep. So, that is progress. Found family all the way. Exactly. The, the girls, you yeah. know, they're not doing it because they need to fix the situation because it's going to somehow be detrimental to themselves. They do it because they really actually hate the idea of these boys fighting. Seeing them unhappy bums yeah. them out, you know. It's like they as yeah. It's uh, it's really nice. Yeah. It's really it's it's really sweet. And and their reaction yeah. at the reconciliation, you know, is ador- is yeah. absolutely adorable. Yeah, and to tease them because they have this little like macho exterior, where they're tough manly men in their heads. Mm-hmm. So they go, oh, just as long as he promises to hug in the back of the car. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> the way they just gently uh, tease them, and the guys like, "Oh, oh, we're just wrestling." <laughs> this is what he. This is what he did to Boba Brazil. <laughs> I love that. And it's like, that's so them. Yeah, that's a great dialogue. That is absolutely fabulous dialogue. It also is. Uh, I also feel that the way it also resolves is also an example of showing toxic masculinity is a crock of crap. It's it, yeah. it's terrible. And because that's that's really yeah. what this is about is trying to overcome those. It's it's that's how we define it today. You know, as us as millennials, you know, we define it as toxic masculinity. But back in the day, it was like yeah. you were so tough to the point that you didn't bond with your your, your essentially your brothers, basically. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have other notes and thoughts about that, but I, I don't want to get too ahead of ahead yeah. of myself about that yet. I was gonna mention. Well, that's why that's that squid tone song exists. Only women cry. Men don't cry. They just throw up. Oh, right. <laughs> when they get upset. I just have a good vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that is like that's their credo. When they get upset, the only that's not true because Lenny loses his mind when he gets upset. Mm-hmm. When he is sad, he is the saddest boy in the world. And when he is angry, he is murderous. And when he is in love, he is a melting marshmallow of a human being. To th- and so to, to all of his protests, he uh, is not Mr. Tough Macho. Only women cry. I don't cry. I have no feelings. Squiggy wants to be like that, but he too is like this lost boy. To that end, I wonder how much Michael and David you know put into the into the writing into this episode because that's a good question because i will say i mean jeff you know jeff franklin was the writer of this episode this is kind of the segue into talking about behind the camera a bit but i'm kind of curious i mean because he's he's done episodes i've really have enjoyed but there is an understand it could just be he gets these characters he may have gotten a well uh, gotten along well with david and michael really well it, this is an incredible, you know, script in that regard, you know, in that regard for this type of show, because as we've said before, you know, one of the problems with the series is that it is very much a big, dumb sitcom. And this is the episode that yeah. even though it's big and dumb and silly, there's a lot of heart. It, there's a lot of um, yeah. Yeah. emotional honesty. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, Laverne truly always has a uh, strong, beating heart to it. It always, even at its worst, uh, worst, there are definitely moments where you feel for these characters and the narrative cares for them. At least until we get to season eight. (laughs) But the way the show can be this big, dumb, loud, goofy sitcom where we're doing I Love Lucy with a skosh of uh, Marx Brothers, and yet you'll have these sad hurt children which is basically what all of them are to a degree they're all bearing the scars of the past they're all trying to be adults and they're all you know failing and succeeding in equal measure so in spite of the fact that it's this big goofy sitcom there is still soul there the soul of the show 
is very, very, very real. Especially in episodes like this. It, no matter how silly it gets, it's it's about caring about how these how far these characters have come. Very well said. Very well said. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's the way that these actors work together and the way, as you've said, you know, they're able to express the, this good writing and work in the, as yeah. an ensemble. It's rather fitting then, segue into behind the, the camera credits, that um, mm -hmm. it took me an enormous amount of silly digging rather than going just straight to IMDb for this. But a fun trivia note today about director Joel Zwick is that in the early 1990s, uh, working on multiple different sitcoms back to back, he directed he directed the episode Sell It Like It Is for the show Getting By, yes. which reunited yes. Cindy Williams, David Alander, and Michael McKean for one more ride on the sitcom stage together. Now, I would love to hear any of those people tell the story of what it was like after so many years getting back together for one more show. Yeah, yeah. And that's not the last time that uh, they would all act together because they do a reunion skit on Laverne and Shirley together again in 2002 all together. Hmm. But the, the way they all managed to come back together and managed to act, you can you can watch this episode, by the way. Our good friend Joy has it up on YouTube. So you gotta do is look for it. And you'll find it. And it's real good. Uh, you gotta think about what it was like after all that strife to come together on a different set and be different people. Mm -hmm. I would love to have been a fly on the wall, like you said, to see that. Just like you said. Because there's a wonderful moment where uh, David and Michael enter and the audience cheers really, really loudly. And David kind of breaks character for a second and he smiles and then he gets right back into it. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. You should look for that if you haven't watched the episode yet. You should look for it because it's really, really sweet. Nice. And if you think this is probably about um, five years before he made his diagnosis public. Mm. Before he let the whole world know that he had MS. And that one little moment where the audience just absolutely lights up at the sight of him. And his pleased gratefulness is worth its weight in gold. It's just really lovely. It's, I mean, that's the kind of reminder that, you know, you, you, you can be missed as a performer. The audience can still love you. And never stop loving you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so this, that's our note for Joel Zwick for uh, for this week. So for uh, I had some fun trivia for <laughs> for Jeff Franklin, this fucking guy again. Okay, <laughs> uh, uh, this is his third episode for the show as writer. Even though he was a staff writer on on it for quite some time, he's got another ten left to go. But today's trivia is that despite being a once very renowned producer of sitcom television, Franklin's credits include producing some rather impressive schlock, including Raptor Island, Puppet Master vs. Demonic Toys, and Planet Raptor. Oh, man. And to, and to that end, I must read for you all this wonderful review off of IMDb from user Chris Spala. <laughs> Dear God, where do I begin? This is bar none the best movie I've ever seen. The camera angles are great, but in my opinion, the acting was the best. Why the script writers for this movie aren't writing big budget films, I will never understand. Another is the casting. It is great. This is the best Ted Raimi film out there for sure. I know some of you out there are probably thinking, no way, he has plenty better. But no, you're wrong. Raptor Island is a work of art. I hope it uh, I hope it should have gotten best movie of the year instead of that crappy movie Crash with a bunch of no names <laughs> and no raptors. I believe this movie is truly the most wonderful thing ever. He's wrong the best Ted Raimi movie is Skinner. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite Ted Raimi cameo is always going to be Midnight Me Train cuz it gets to have his eyeball popped out. But Oh my god, yeah. That super CGI blood, the super CGI eyeball. Oh my god, yeah. Oh my god. Come on. It was it was a seven it was like a seventeen million dollar feature. Come on, man. Come some slack. People still dragged him about that. I don't know why. They dragged him about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Anyway, 
Um, oh gosh. But yeah, I I still I still wonder, you know, like because like I said, this is not to say Jeff hasn't done good episodes, but just the the quality of the Lenny and Squig stuff in this episode, I'm yeah. really kind of surprised yeah. this wasn't a da- a Davy Lander and Michael McKeon episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too, honestly, because this is so intensely focused upon these characters and their inte- their relationship. I'm surprised that uh, they didn't at least pull writing credit on it because, you know, this is the kind of stuff where they would say, uh, let's do it for the boys, as David used to say. Mm. Let's uh, make sure that these boys are still the boys that uh, we were playing on little cl- comedy club stages when we were playing in uh, our college dorm. So, and to find out that they actually kind of, you know, let somebody else write that. And I don't know how much of it was rewritten. I, we got actually, actually I'm cu- now I'm really curious uh, about episodes like this and Helmet Weekend and A Night at the Awards and stuff that's almost entirely focused on the boys. I wonder how much of that ended up getting rewritten and how much of that is uh, just the scripters um, knowing the characters and saying, hey, I can do this. Exactly. And then trusting them. I, mm-hmm. I sense that uh, I sense that uh, so at least some rewriting had to have happened at some point, because gosh, uh, we have f- a friend who um, uh, sends us excerpts of scripts sometimes, and um, you'll get to find out all kinds of things that were in the original drafts that either we really wish had ended up on screen, or we're really glad it didn't end up on screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes a lot of that stuff is learning and squiggy stuff that they re- they they probably wrote. I'm gonna guess that they were wrote. Yeah. 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 In the end, you have to wonder how much is them and how much is the writer in question, because I can't you can't give a definitive answer because sometimes it was everybody in the room throwing ideas into a pot. Sometimes it was one person's vision. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't know. I mean, to name drop my first feature, as we were talking about last episode, um, yes. that was written by a group of six of us in an IRC oh. chat room. And there. Oh, my gosh. IRC. That takes me back. Oh, yeah. And I mean, this was 10 years. This is over 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But, it says. Yeah, but the uh, the um, uh, there there is that collaborative process, as you as you put it really well, uh, the melting pot, you know, um, yeah. where we've even heard this discussed in the context of like Mr. Science Theater where they say like, oh, who came up with this riff? And they sort of said that once a certain riff kind of got out into the ether in the writing room, it sort of left that person just became part of the show. And I want, yeah. and that's where you wonder what it was like, you know, it was sort of a, giving assignments per se for this show yeah. with, you know, essentially like you go to the IMDb credits and sometimes you see like up to like six or seven story consultants, which means that, yeah. you know, those are all people in the room possibly throwing ideas in one yep, episode. Yep, yep, yep. And we've, uh, you know, heard some behind the scenes things because of people have doing, done interviews and written things and done interviews. So you kind of learn about what it was like in that room and kind of learn things. Yeah. So in the end, it was probably just like a melange of everybody doing everything. Mm-hmm. So everybody throwing everything into a singular pot and you end up with something that is perfectly, it really is, and it's really, really well tailored um, to the boys' perspectives. It really honestly is. So it's not just it's like a very random, much, it's not like a random stew. Yeah. This is more like a really good cassoulet. Yes, yes. An excellent cassoulet with some good duck sausage. Mm. Ducktail sausage. <laughs> I was going to mention, I wonder if that picture that uh, Squiggy tries to give Lenny is of the actual, of actually of David as a baby. It's too gosh darn cute. Whatever it is, it's too gosh darn cute. I know. My mama was right. I really did make for an ugly baby. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is, which is quite, quite a lie, even though I do like that Laverne gives a little nod of us like, yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, the girls are kind of tough on the boys in this episode. I think they've. I think I think they've learned they have to be. No, I know. Shirley's saying that Squiggy's possessions should be cleansed by fire, or she's often thought that. So. Yeah, uh, I that uh, is a what is it? I have long thought that many of Squiggy's things could be cleansed by fire, or something like that. Should be. Yeah, it's be. the delivery of that line. God, Cindy kills it. <laughs> Cindy is so good in this yeah. episode too. Oh yeah, she is. She's so good with her. The, the scenes that they, they give her, she just attacks everything. I love her. Lord, give me strength with the ha- with the hand um, extended to God, and Lady takes it as a signal that they should arm wrestle. Right, and then she <laughs> then she wins. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah. She instantly kills him. With the, she goes, him. And he's just like, "Ow, my hand!" Mm-hmm. Immediately. That's how. That is how. A, how weak he is, and B, how strong she is. And we know we know she's got one heck of a right hook. Oh, yes. So. Yep. Richie Cunningham definitely knows that. Richie Cunningham and his whole face knows that by now. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, so, yes, yeah, so I guess that gets us to, like, strengths and weaknesses. That, like, that's a big strength, you know, is, is Cindy. And yeah. uh, I'm trying to think what other good strengths this episode's got. I mean, we finally get to see the Uncle Elliot's Wax Museum. That was a big thing. Yeah, we do. Yeah, which is fun. We actually, we actually get to see what the horror room looks like in that place Mm -hmm. the execution the torture chamber looks like with all the vampires and the wolfmen Mm -hmm. all scattered about yeah that's one of my favorite hello bits the uh let me just see yeah whoever built this place must have one twist in mind uh hello (laughs) (laughs) david nails that is perfect oh man of course he freaks poor laverne out there is you can imagine Uncle Elliot drawing all the rubes into this museum and just taking their cash to see Anne Blythe and Donna Reed standing there in uh, rub off ball gowns. You can actually, you absolutely picture it. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. It's just yeah, great. Just in that one little, one little bit of the museum we get to see. It makes me wonder how... You know, Squiggy is very much a schemer. The boys get to a lot of scheming. And I'm, I'm so glad they finally been dropping that so far this season. That was getting pretty repetitive pretty fast. Yeah. But it makes me wonder if that's part of why Squiggy leans that way is, yeah. you know, Uncle Elliot is like Grunkle Stan yeah. and succeeded. Yeah. Yeah, I can actually picture that. I can picture his uncle being a Grunkle Stan kind of figure. Where he's like, this is my tourist trap and I'm proud of my tourist trap. I'll do anything to make sure that my tourist trap is succeeds. And that's what he's done and what he will continue to do. I was going to mention, if Squiggy's there during operating hours, I wonder if it's just during the weekends. Because otherwise, when the heck is he doing his day job? That's a very good question. Although we admittedly haven't seen them deal with the brewery in quite a while. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to be coming up soon. We're going to go back into the brewery setting pretty soon. Hmm. So. It's interesting how they try to stretch the the uh, beyond the brewery this particular season. And speaking again of of the other good positive you know elements, the uh, the exchange we were discussing the earlier that for business or pleasure, and his response is you know go back, piggybacking off what you just brought up a little bit of both. I can stay here as long as I sit here like a dummy doing business hours. And yeah. <laughs> Laverne pause, pauses, and then you know states no, can't do it too easy. And I, yeah. I love that she has standards for Zing. Yeah, 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 yeah. At, at this point, um, you know, it's, and it's, she's been zinging the boys forever. At some point, you just got to go, eh, let it go. Try another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Try for the, the hard to reach fruit. Indeed. There also is, I mean, because that whole scene, you know, we haven't really talked too much about the interactions in the Chamber of Horrors, but the, uh, yeah. first of all, I did want to bring up, uh, it uses the music from the Haunted House episode from season two, which I was very happy about. <laughs> the, man, there is that bit where Squiggy says, I can't apologize, it's unnatural. What yeah. kind of messed up upbringing did he have to get this bad? Oh, we know. We know Cannon tells us that he had a uh, has had a, a crappy mother. His father walked out, and we'll learn a bunch of stuff about Helmut Squigman by season seven. Uh, we know that his stepfather was a jerk. We know that his mother locked him in a closet. And that's how he became interested in moths, and you can see all of this coming to fruition in the way he handles the situation, which is poorly. At least at first. Mm. Yeah, and that, that you can see 
that that is the kind of uh, man that his upbringing kind of raised him up to be. Indeed. So I can I can kind of understand it. That's why he had, that is the kind of messed up childhood he had. Like uh, when he was physically abused by his mom. And he bears the scars of that in that he's afraid of angering people. And yet when it comes to the point that he is um, pushed, well, pushed this far, he will lose it himself. And I don't know how much of that is, you know, what he learned, what he was you know, hurt by, and how much of that is inborn. Yeah, so I'm trying to think if there's anything I didn't like about the episode. The only thing that came to yeah. mind was the, you know, was strangely, I would have liked Carmine to have something to say about the boys trying to work out their issues because we don't see yeah. enough of Carmine bonding or connecting with other men. Yeah, that's true. We get um, more of him hanging out with the guys by the time we get to season six, season seven, because at that point, uh, <laughs> Penny and Cindy were fighting again. So they really didn't want to be on the set with each other, mm. like allegedly, like right by the time season seven happened and then bing boom, season eight. But um, it was a whole, it was happened for a whole different reason, I should emphasize. But yeah, he doesn't spend a heck of a lot of time with either Lenny or Squiggy, mostly because you get the feeling that he doesn't want to uh, to some degree. That's like also, uh, yeah, not their, in a way, not their fault because they were two different social strata when they were in high school. And I don't know if Carmine ever got over the mentality. Mm. I mean, clearly, uh, clearly Lenny and Squiggy have, in a way, because they'll like, they'll hang out with anybody, mm. in a way. But, uh, but he, he uh, kind of it isn't quite to the point where he'll you know admit these are his friends the girls are kind of over it by now but yeah 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 Car carmine still is a little he's still a little hoity-toity i guess in his own way yeah a little just a little, a little bit a little. yeah i mean it's 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 just so amusing because i mean it's like he it's like dude you banged like every divorcee you could in the neighborhood <laughs> You know, you're not, you're maybe a couple of steps above these two guys, but man, yeah. you got some, uh, exactly. you got some, I don't know what do you call it. Uh, you, you know, you got some ink on them fingertips, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, but that was, I don't know. Is there anything that you didn't, that you didn't feel kind of work for this episode? Like not, not to like try to nitpick or anything, but there, was there anything that just kind of stood out for you? Like, honestly, I would have, um. Even as much as I like the um, Shirley and Lenny part of it, I would have involved the Lauren a little bit more in that portion of the um, the episode. Uh, I maybe would have like tried to dig a little bit deeper into how Squiggy feels, since we kind he kind of fades out in the mid section of the episode a little bit. But really, I don't have any more. I, maybe actually, I would want um, more Edna. Mm-hmm. Because Edna is really distressed by the way they're fighting. And I don't know if that's because uh, she walked by the door and she could hear them. I don't know if it's because the other tenants were complaining because of the noise. But she was really distressed by it. So I'd be curious to know what her opinion of Lenny almost falling towards death is. And I want to yep. know, you know how she feels about the estrangement. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that, especially. Yeah, because it's Edna's really, you know, again, we brought this up that it feels like she's getting very like pushed back to being functional. She has the function of informing yeah. the girls that there is a fight going on and yet she's not there and present when they break it yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't even know why she's not in that scene. Yeah, I just it, the only she should be in that scene. The only thing I can think of is that she was basically on the phone in the hallway downstairs, you know, calling the cops. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I can't imagine why she called the cops. On the yeah, and that's the problem. Because, I can't. I can't imagine yeah. that either. Because if they were breaking yeah. things, if they were smashing up the place, yeah, you know, and it was yeah, getting they were beating each other up, right? You know, then sure, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, either that or, you know, the girls beat her upstairs and then Shirley met her on the stairwell to tell her Lenny just fell out the window. It's also possible. Yeah. It's either, it's, 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 it's an either or kind of thing, but, uh, you know, she should have been more heavily involved. Though. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, but that all being said, I mean, the little, 
kind of nagging details um, were small, you know, all things considered. Yeah, this, is, this, was, this was a very good episode, which I guess brings us to, yes. uh, I think that brings us to the ranking, doesn't it? Or is there more stuff we want to make sure we get out of the way? I wanted to mention, so we get to the tag scene, the, the boys, like, I wanted to actually talk more about that last scene between the boys. Mm -hmm. Because they really kind of dig a little, dig deeper to the depth that I was hoping for earlier in the episode because the simplicity of Lenny looking at his best friend and going, are you really my best friend? It says volumes and volumes. It says so much with so few words. Because at this point, you know, you know, you've been my best friend since I was a very, very, very tiny child. And now you've done this to me. And I don't know who you are. Mm. Something powerful about that. That's good. Um, Always. In response to that, I, I guess not in, in addition to that to say, because because there is the there's, there's the two elements, right? There's first the uh, I can talk to, you know, talk big to a decapitated dummy, but I can't but apologize to Lenny, you know. Yeah. And then I love how when Lenny interrupts him to say his presence in the room, he calls him Squigman. He does not call him Squiggy. He does yeah. not call him Andrew. He does not call him Andy. He calls him Squigman. Yeah. And I used to have a habit of referring to people by like, you know, because they're people, I have friends that I, you know, I have the abbreviated version of their name is what they, uh, as what I call them because that's their preference. And I sometimes would call them their fuller name as a sign of things getting serious. And I did get called out on this. Yeah. Um, you, 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 Lisa, know the person, one of the, the, the person that called me out on this as well. And yeah, that was a transformative moment for me to realize that when you do that, it's a sign of disconnect. It's a sign of trying to put yourself yeah. above that person. And yeah. it's what's kind of interesting. So the first part about that is how it puts Lenny into a position of trying to stand up for himself. And then secondly, it then leads into the whole, you know, yes, yes, what? And then Squeaky says, yes, sir. Which to me, now I haven't seen obviously Helmet Weekend, you know, which I, I know about. I know yeah. the concept of what that episode is about. But to me, at least, it really tells on Squiggy's stepfather yes. that he his response to a yes, what is yes, sir. And that yes. he may have had a stepfather with a military background or a very militaristic background as in very like you know had the yes sir attitude even if the, he wasn't didn't serve in the military and yeah. domineering patriarchal sort of thing so as you're saying getting to understand more of squeaky would have been great because there is a lot of breadcrumbs here for us to work with but to know some of the actual lucid answers would have yeah. been really special exactly exactly uh eventually um we get more information in drips and drabs as the season goes on, as the series goes on, uh, we never learn a whole lot about his stepfather. But yeah, that response is super telling. And uh, Lenny calls him Squigman after he tells him he doesn't want to see him anymore. He's not his friend anymore. Right. Just after he uh, tries to stab him to death with the uh, back scratcher slash all the stuff. Well, it's a, it's a, I thought it was a cane. Is it a back scratcher or is yeah, it a cane? Whatever it is, it's he, a. It's, he calls it a back scratcher. That's a joke. That's the joke. He calls it a back scratcher. No, I thought he called and it a, just, a, a. Actually, I have the line written down. He calls it a big piece of wood. Oh yes, right. It's a big piece of wood. Big piece of wood. Ah, oh, and then she's the way she slowly lowers her head and displays <laughs> the. <laughs> I remember that. Okay. All right. Yeah, but yeah, before he, he tries to stab him, to death, that's after he tries to stab him to death. That's what he calls him, and it's just this total level of disdain. Because to him, Squiggy is the Squig or Squiggy. He's never Andrew or Andy or anything like that. That's who he is. And to just you know, flat out last name him like that is ouch. Mm -hmm. So that's, 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 I mean, business. It's, yeah. I'm trying to think of anybody, anytime he ever does that. Wow. With anybody else. And I can't remember him ever doing that to anybody else. Not in the show. Yeah, I don't think so. And we even know that yeah. we've established earlier on with other episodes, other characters that calling someone by their last name like that, unless it's their preference, is, you know, it's a sign of being above them. You know, the way Rosie referred to Laverne as Defazio, you know, there's a green bomb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I miss that dynamic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, the only other thing I want to mention is a th- something I liked, which we don't, we have not mentioned. It's another ador. You know, the, we've said, mentioned there's tons of great dialogue and exchanges. Shirley tells the story that her and Laverne fought at one point because of uh, working on a dress. Yes. And Shirley says, "Well, the thing that hurt me was she was using Boo Boo Kitty as a pin cushion." Yes. <laughs> oh wow, I love that. The lack of respect for Boo Boo Kitty there from Laverne. Wow. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, just stab the pins in there. And I love Lenny's response. The as you were saying, Michael's oh, facial expression. Pin cushion. <laughs> <laughs> yes face he's like i said extremely emotive in this episode he's ex- the fiend oh that, the fiend she was just she was someone addressed <gasps> the fiend <laughs> he says that it's beautiful uh and then at the conclusion we get the uh yes. the pickle heads call back yes yeah she cut kind of, where where they finally they fondly call them pickle heads and tease them for for uh being all huggy with each other and then the boys get their revenge when they sit in that little chair again. And then, the, okay, notice the fact that the, we actually didn't mention this. Uh, there is a little button gag where Laverne sits in an electric chair and the lights dim to a frying sound. And Squig says, it's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. But later on... When that happens again, uh, the boys seem to know what's going to happen. And they um, put the girls in bondage and then leave the room. <laughs> yep. That was uh. that was uh, that was interesting. But, you know, hey, on the bright side, they left them there as a decent, friendly prank. They didn't try anything yes. fresh, which is amazing. But surely recognize Squiggy's touch. Yeah. Squiggy, what are you doing? Yeah, that's <laughs> that's true. That is true. Well, she also might that's be recognized cool. in the way he goes, yeah, and and on her bo- across yeah. her body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked um, I liked Lenny's just like old times. I think that's the one says just like old times. <laughs> like what the heck did the two of them doing? Do, 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 what the heck did the two of them doing to those girls? Though that's just like old times. Oh God, high school oh. must have been a trip for those four. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, you picked well just from the Anne Marie episode alone, just from a nun story alone. You can imagine what their, uh, the childhoods were like, what their teenage years were like, and how they uh, were all friendly and they came out with these like really strong friendships and they love each other as friends. But <laughs> yo oh boy, did they uh, tease the heck out of each other and do stupid pranks? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that they do. Oh, it's, it's, it's terrific. It's terrific. Gosh, cool. But yeah, it's it's good. It's yeah. I mean, all in all, though, I mean, that's the thing is we're, you know, the connection of that past to the episodes prior we've seen to this episode now, I this was really strong. It's I love it yeah. uses the, they use the parts of the past so well. It It is incredibly well acted. The directing is really t- This is one of Joel's best ones, in my opinion. Joel is really, yes. really kicking ass. And I'm I'm kind of bummed that we're going to lose him pretty soon, you know, at some, relatively soon. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, solid freaking director. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he does a great job with this. This is a great little episode. I think it's probably one of my favorites of season five. I think it really is. Nice. Though there's a lot of strong competition for the best episode in season five. You'll be seeing that coming up. A lot of strong competition. Now, that is good to hear because we are only at episode seven of like twenty two or twenty three. I think so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You got you got a lot to enjoy coming up. Nice. You got a lot. Anywho, yeah. so what are we ranking this one, my darling, my love? We are ranking this at a nine point five for me. Nice. My issues with the the episode are like really, really minor, like really, really minor because this this flows beautifully. It's fun. It's funny. It's touching. It comes from a character place, even with all the goofy physical comedy. And it uses the girls' friendship with the boys and the boys' friendship with each other in a beautiful, unique way. Very nice. Yeah. And I think for myself, I will... A 9 leaning to a 9.5. I have a feeling if I come back to this in time, like I'm going to make animated GIFs of it and, of uh, you know, at some point in the future. Because there's some, as we said, the, the facial expressions are so good and so many little gestures yes. and moments um, that... 
I'll probably bump it up to 9.5. But for now, it's like a 9. I just, I don't know. Maybe it's just the the opening was a bit disconnected from the rest of it. You practically could have started it without the end introduction and them fighting. You practically could have, yeah. could have started with that. Uh, not to say I don't love the yeah. opening scene, but because the opening scene doesn't like come back around in any way, it feels a little out of place. Yeah. Like kind of, it's it's an orphan yeah. scene to to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it kind of felt like the girls went, well, this episode is about the boys. There needs to be something here for us. Yeah. In a way, or that the writers decided to do that, uh, so there wouldn't be there wouldn't be arguments, or uh, that uh, they. They said they thought to themselves, well, our uh, fans are here for the physical comedy. They need some phys- signature physical comedy in the scene. Mm-hmm. And it and so could they it in. and they could have also just have had this idea for a scene and they just didn't have any other stories to attack it on to because, yeah. you know, that can happen. True. I mean, you and I writers, True. we've had, you know, scenes that are kind of orphaned from the rest of our other work. And we're like, I don't know what the hell that's going to fit yeah. into, but maybe one yeah. day. Yeah, honestly, like they could have probably put this on the front of any other episode and had it have it bloom into something else. Mm-hmm. Like actually, this would have worked decently as a front piece for a Fat City Holiday. I was thinking the same thing because yeah, you, the girls get interested in fitness. They've been doing all these exercises and they think they know something about physical fitness, and they decide to test themselves by going to the spa, and then yeah, you can build a nicer. More interesting, less fat phobic uh, story around that mm-hmm. from that opening scene. And that would have worked better. Um, I could almost like picture a simpler scene where the girls are like sitting down to watch cartoons on or, or watch cartoons and watch a movie on a Saturday afternoon and they're relaxing and all of a sudden they hear the boys yelling at each other the dumb waiter that's right which god we haven't seen the dumb waiter get much use in a long time now no no and it's right there it's still right there and they could easily use it not to mention there was a thing you noticed uh in there uh, on it as well yes 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 there is a sign that the boys have posted above their part of the dumb waiter with an arrow pointing down at it and it says animal quarantine that is that <laughs> that, that, that raises so many goofy thoughts because does it oh, is it yeah. just a sign that they stole and they found a place for it is it referring to they've kept animals in the dumb waiter and that's why they don't use it anymore or is that how they view the girls because like hey girls stay stay out because they still have this childlike parts of themselves yeah. or they see the girls as um Animals as panthers to be tamed, so to speak. Yeah, it's true. The girls are animals. They're sexual beasts. <laughs> sexual beasts that way, possibly. Mm-hmm. They just have to find their pleasure centers. <laughs> just keep poking the foot. You'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I think uh, that does that wrap up everything for this episode this week? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think it does. All right. Well. Thank you again, everybody, so much for joining us for this episode. We'd like to give another special thanks to our wonderful Patreons that have been supporting us. uh, Our wonderful patrons of Patreon, I should say. I've I've been working on that terminology. And uh, what are the other things i got to say? Oh, right. Social media. That's a thing. Sorry, this is a little exhausting of an episode. The... um, if you would like to know more, you can please find us at Facebook, Tumblr, WordPress, Patreon, or YouTube at Night After Night Pod. Or if you would like to communicate with us a little more directly, a little more regularly, you can find us at Night After Night PC on Twitter. We will not be doing TikTok. We might be doing a Discord. Wait. Hey. Are we doing a Discord? Discord. That's an idea. Oh, that's an idea. <laughs> Well, we're recording this in May of 2021, so maybe by the time this episode's out, there'll be a Discord. But anywho. Possibly. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. And um, uh, Lisa, I'm hearing I'm hearing bells in the distance. What's coming up next week? Is that what's on the I horizon there? I can hear there? the bells. Can't you hear them chime? Frank and Enda get married. <gasps> it's the wedding. What? It's finally happening. Finally happening. Ah. Finally happening. And I had, I this was something I had accidentally spoiled for me when I was trying to look up Edna's yeah. character, uh, and um, I was supremely delighted. So I hope I'm really looking forward to talking about this episode. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really sweet episode. It's a really fun episode. Awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks again, everybody, and hope you join us next time. And um, yeah, uh, just, just I don't know. 
apologize to your friends when you hurt them. That's a good note to leave it when on. you're trying to pull somebody back up into a window, don't grab the boots. Yeah, grab the ankles. <laughs> grab the ankles. Gra even grabbing the pants would have been better. Mm -hmm. Well, unless the boot, the the, uh, the belt was too loose, but you know, hey. And I mean, and yeah. listen, if if their torso pops off, you tried. <laughs> God. And if your friends, uh, yeah, and if your friend's sponge bath water actually smells that bad after they've been in the hospital, ask questions of the hospital. I know. <laughs> God, I'm I'm blown away. Yeah. Oh God. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Were they not bathing him? They hadn't been bathing him. Oh my <laughs> God. Unless, Why does it smell that bad? That is unless they. Well, you know, maybe it was the same hospital where they had Laverne and Shirley as uh, you know volunteer nurses, and they had terrible nurses and terrible Possibly. gropey doctors. There you go. There you go. People are too busy doing disgusting things somewhere else. Ugh. 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 Oh, great. We really did end it on a Lenny and Squiggy note, didn't we? <laughs> no, if this was ended on a Lenny and Squiggy note, there would either be music or there would be uh, some kind of perverted reference to Jello and women and wrestling in Jello and ants. It's funny you mention that because I actually got uh, a kiddie pool full of Jello. You want to go wrestle with me? Hey, there you go. Well, I'm wrestle for it. Hey, there we go. <laughs> All right, we're going to go off and do that. So we'll see everybody next time. Hey, bye-bye.